The question is, what are the keys to write the direct response copy that actually not appear very forcing and sleazy, but actually connects with the potential clients and keep them engaged and ultimately convert them well? Yeah. And you, you brought out a uh, you brought up an important point there, but you know we don't want to, essentially we don't want to manipulate people in in what we write because we can feel that as customers as consumers as as the person being marketed to we can always feel when when someone's trying to you know kind of trick us into something manipulate us into buying something um, so we don't want to go there that's the easy way to write copy is to just trick and manipulate people and it um, I won't lie it works it can work but it's not going to uh, long term, I don't think it's a very effective strategy for business. Um, so the words that we use are really, really crucial. They're really critical to um, building an audience, building a connection with that audience, uh, and then eventually serving that audience by selling them our our service, our product. Um, and so uh, research, I don't, uh, you know, the, the podcast that I do, Psychology of Copywriting. Um, I review a lot of academic research into you know, what's going on in the brain when people read our copy. Um, and one of those studies talked about three really important types of words that we need to use in our, uh, in our stories or in our copy, including our sales copy. Um, and that's the, the words need to be informative, so not informational. People don't, people don't want the information. Um, they want to be informed. And there's a, there's a subtle but important difference there that um, you know, information is just telling me that that carpet is red. Informative is telling me, you know, that carpet is, is red because, um, you know, my mom's lipstick was always red and, and she passed away, you know, 10 years ago. You know, building that story in there is, is more informative than just plain old information. People also want the words that we use to be specific. So they don't want us to beat around the bush. They don't want us to try to, you know, we, we talked about being manipulative and being sketchy in the words. A lot of times that's because we're, we're skirting around the issue. People can feel it, that we're not, um, we're not being specific and direct. So people want specific uh, words. They also want context-driven words. Um, so again, don't, don't just skirt around the issue, um, but, but be um, specific. And context-driven is about um, you know, the context of who we're talking to and what we're trying to, uh, how we're trying to serve them and what we're trying to sell them. That builds the context to tell us, should we use, um, you know, one word over another? Should we, you know, does this audience prefer us to, to, to be um, direct, to be indirect? Does this audience prefer to be spoken to like we're a teacher or spoken to like we're a friend? Um, you know, that context builds the words that we use as well. So informative, specific, and context-driven. There's also another really powerful word, um, and that's the word because. So when we're writing sales copy, it's not just that we want to be uh, informative and specific and context driven. We also want to give them a reason. There was that old study. It was done in like the, the 1970s about somebody that wanted to um, butt in line to use the photocopier. And so they would say to the person in front of them, can I use the copier because I need to make copies? It didn't matter what the, if the favor was small, it didn't matter what that, um, what, what came after the, because it followed the right pattern of words. Um, can, I, can I make copies because I need to make copies, right? That makes no sense. And yet it was like 92% of the people said, sure, go ahead. Uh, even though there was no actual reason. So the, the power of the word because in our sales copy is you should you know, click this button because you should buy this product because. Um, and we, we can lead people in an ethical and, and good way. We can lead people down the road that we want them to go down um, by using those types of simple little words like because. Um, so that's, those are some of the, the types of words and, and one specific word of what we can use in our sales copy. I love that. And about context, I really uh, love about context. Um, cause I think sometimes even let's say we know uh, our specific kind of audience, but maybe they are in different stage of their customer journey. So Jeff, uh, before we go, Obviously, we got to put all those links and goodies in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Um, before we go, I think it's good that maybe I ask this question. No, I think it's good. It's what are the some biggest common mistake mm -hmm. when, you know, a special coaches, consultants, they start to write their first sales page? Right. You know, there's, there's obviously a lot of mistakes, um, but I'll speak to one 
um, that I see most often in copy. So, you know, general marketing mistakes, you're spending, you're spending your money in, on the wrong place, the wrong ads, you're targeting the wrong audience. Um, you don't know your goal. You don't know your avatar. Those, those are all um, general marketing mistakes. The biggest one I see um, in copywriting though, is really, it goes back to research. Um, like I said, I geek out on research, um, but it goes back to research that you don't know. Uh, you don't know, or, or you haven't spent the time to align your brand voice with your customer aspirations, um, which might sound a bit airy fairy. So let me uh, describe it a little more. So you want to connect the way that you speak, the way that you write rather uh, the words that you write uh, and, and the manner, the style in which you write with who your customer or client uh, is or wants to become. So I, I have a, a friend to call a fellow uh, copywriter who said it this way that she has a very intentional and very loud brand, even though she's not necessarily a loud person. She's an introvert. She's uh, kind of shy at a conference. She wants to go spend time in her hotel room, just like the rest of us uh, by herself, just like the rest of us introverts, I should say. Um, but her brand is very loud, very out there because she knows that her, uh, her ideal customer, her ideal client wants that for their brand. They want to be a personality driven brand. So she's loud and out there in her, visual branding uh, and design, and even in her copy, because that's who her ideal customer, ideal client wants to be. So she's aligned her brand voice with, um, with her uh, customer aspirations, with her client aspirations. I'm working on a, on some copy for a client right now. He's a, a lawyer. And so I've, you know, written through or read through a bunch of his uh, material. He's got, he's written a bunch of books. He has a bunch of YouTube videos and all that. But I've, I've identified, okay, he has four main traits as a brand, and that's he wants to be a servant, he wants to be an educator, he wants to be an expert, and he wants to be a guide. Uh, and so every single word that I'm going to write, um, that's who his customer wants. And so that's how I'm going to position him in the words that I, that I write. Because when you're looking for a lawyer, you want someone who's going to serve you, you want someone who's going to uh, be an expert, you want someone who's going to teach you a little bit, um, you know, show that they know their stuff and use it in uh, um talk to you about it in everyday language and you want them to guide you in the right direction. Uh, so every word that I'm writing for him and his brand, it's aligning that brand voice with who his um, customers or clients want. So there's, there's those two ways of doing it. One is who your customer wants to be. And the other one is who they are looking for specifically. That, that's a bit kind of industry specific. Um, you know, if a lawyer was being loud and brash in their brand, that might give off the wrong idea. Um, but for a copywriter who's, who's um, working with personality driven brands, that makes sense. Wow. Isn't that such a golden nugget, you know, align with, with your brand voice, with your, uh, your potential clients, uh, their aspiration. I think that it's super fantastic. And if you like this video and this episode, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share with others. So more crisis center leaders have the opportunity to consume this type of valuable content. Before I go, I just want to remind you that you can click on the screen to go to the next business growth videos, and I will see you in the next episode.